hi everyone welcome back as you can see the octave mandolin uh, just came out of the shop so I hung it in uh, the house so the, the French polish can cure for three days so I've got three days that uh, I can do a shop project uh, and I'm gonna use that time to fix my bench top so uh, the bench top here that you see was made out of uh, skids uh, so I needed something quick and I, I didn't really had money to, to spend on wood so at work we used to have like a, a bunch of uh, bigger skids and uh, this one's a mix of uh, wild cherry and then there's uh, white oak and uh, the, the spalted oak is the white oak and then there's some red oak as well in there so uh, basically what I'm doing right now is uh, cleaning up the surface and you'll see uh, why I want to redo it um, there's like over the years, because the wood was, were skids, uh, the wood kind of shrunk, it uh, warped, uh, so you have big gaps there, and uh, like it, it warped up and um, big chunks that came out. So uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, remove the, the top in pieces, and then uh, uh, because my drum sander is only 17 inches, and the idea here is to uh, surface them in there, uh, I'm cutting them to 17 inch wide and then I'm going to rejoin them after. So you can see here I'm, I'm using the drum sander and in the video it doesn't seem like I used it much but I spent the, the most part of three and a half to four hours on it. Uh, the reason being that uh, it was a full width and it was hardwood I was using 80 grit sandpaper and my uh, dust collection doesn't really cut it like uh, uh, you'll see in, in a shot later that uh, there's a dust residue at the end and I was able to get a great finish and this is the actual speed uh, that my drum sander because I lowered the speed at the lowest so my uh, dust collection could somewhat manage but uh, so I was able to get a great finish I was able to get it straight but it, it took quite a bit of time to do that in the process, I changed at the very beginning. I changed my uh, uh, sandpaper, so I had like a one, uh, I think it was 150, and then I changed it to 80 grit. And then the the first roll that I put on there ended up uh, not tight enough, and then I ended up ripping it right away. So I, I was careful with the second roll, and uh, then it worked out okay. So you can see like the top. I started with the bottom section because the top was straighter and then uh, I thicknessed it until I was happy and I did all the pieces at the same time so at the end they were all the same thickness. Here you can see I'm uh, uh, joining the edges and uh, I'm doing uh, all the parts uh, to, so that I can have a, a straight fit when I glue them together and I'm going to put some splines in there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a dry fit of... Uh, the whole top to make sure that all the parts uh, won't have any gap in between them. I'm uh, centering it. Then once I'm happy with uh, how everything looks like, I'm gonna uh, route my channel, which is basically exactly where the old spline used to be. So I'm redoing that, and then uh, I'll do the glue up. So that uh, and so I'm gonna do like the the two sides, and then uh, the the centerpiece are, is gonna be added once the the glue up is done. So to do the glue up of the whole assembly, what I ended up doing was to uh, redo a dry fit, make sure uh, I was happy with it, and then I secured the one side you can see with the two blue clamps, then I was able to glue the centerpiece. Um, and then I screwed in the centerpiece from under, so that's how it used to be uh, secured, and that way that gives me an edge to uh, clamp to. What I didn't uh, 
notice is that my clamp were missing uh, roughly like three eighths of an inch to be able to clamp it. So I had to uh, resort to the longer one. And then uh, that, that way that worked out okay. So once I was happy on how it looked, I was able to secure uh, the first side from under and then that way I was going to be able to remove the two top clamps and then go and glue up the other side. And uh, once the other side was glued up, I was able to pair uh, the two, uh, two sets of pony clamps uh, and uh, tie them up together and that way I was able to uh, hold the whole thing and then I was going to go under again and uh, screw them up from under. Next thing was to kind of uh, uh, remove like uh, 80 grit is a pretty uh, rough paper so I did have a nice finish but I just went over and scuffed it with like a, a finer sandpaper with the orbital sander and I'm using tongue oil uh, to seal everything up and that really pops the grain. Uh, I knew I knew the grain was pretty nice when, and over the years like when my idea was to replace the whole top. But we, with all the spalt that I had in there, uh, I, I decided that I actually wanted to keep it. I just wanted to make it straight so the tools were not going to be wobbling on it. And uh, I wouldn't lose like washers in the gaps between the pieces of wood. And so it, it needed to be done. And now I'm going to have a great surface to work uh, with. Um, the next thing is uh, you see at the back end, uh, there's a, a gap. And that's because in my previous shop, I wanted to run some electrical. Here, it's not a problem because, as you can see, I've already ran electrical everywhere. So what I decided to do was to be a tray so I can put uh, like consumables or uh, drill bits and uh, other kind of stuff. So, so that's what I'm doing here. So I just quickly uh, used some plywood that was laying around and cut some pieces. Unfortunately, I had to uh, splice them, so that's what you see me do here. But when you offset your splice from one end to the other, it doesn't really affect the whole thing. Put some caps on, and then I'm going to put it in and uh, put some uh, some things to uh, fill, them, fill it up. As you can see, all I have to do now is uh, put the tools back on and uh, put uh, fill up the tray with all the other stuff. And uh, I think it's going to be easier for me to keep that uh, workbench cleaner than it was before. So I want to thank you guys for uh, stopping by once again. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please uh, consider subscribing. There's going to be uh, a quick uh, subscribe button at the end of the video. Uh, check out the other videos. Uh, please uh, do like and share. And um, until next time, I wish you well.